Kia ora e hoa, haere mai, come and join me. I'm all snuggled down in the story cave today. When my kids were little, we would get a box just like this and they would take it into their room and sometimes they would make a hut out of it or sometimes they would sleep in it. They might put their pillow here and the mattress out on the floor in front of them or they might tip it up and sleep in it like it was a big, big bed and fill it full of cushions. Maybe you've done something like that before. Well, I thought we could pretend we're all snuggled down, ready for a bedtime story in our story cave. Are you snuggled down? Pull the blankets up under your nose. Make sure you're nice and comfy. Maybe you've got a soft toy something you can snuggle down with. Mm, pretend it's in your arms now if you don't have one with you. And maybe we could have Susie the Doctor. This is a book that I wrote many, many years ago. It's illustrated by Errol McCleary. And it's about me when I was a kid just like you and about my imagination. Are you nice and comfy? Ready for a story? Let's begin. Susie the Doctor, illustrated by Errol McCleary. Ow! Susie woke up to find Ty on the floor. Here he is. He had fallen out of bed and was looking very sick. Oh, Ty, said Susie, you're not looking too good at all. She felt Ty's forehead. It was quite hot. Susie phoned the doctor. Hello, she said. My baby's not very well. Can I make an appointment, please? Mm, poor old Ty. Ty the Tuatara. He's not looking very well at all, is he? Ty sat in the waiting room while Susie found the doctor. Susie's dressing gown made a great doctor's coat. In the bottom of the wardrobe, she found an old lunchbox with her doctor's instruments. Next patient, please, she called. Can you see her old dressing gown? It does look like a doctor's coat, doesn't it? And look at all the patients. Hmm, I think I'd better take your temperature, said Dr Susie. Hmm, she said, and she wrote in Ty's file. Next, Dr Susie used a special torch to look into Ty's ears, eyes and nose. The torch felt quite cold in Ty's ears and the light made him blink, but he sat very still for the doctor. Hmm, what a good weed tuatara. Can you see the doctor using the torch? Dr Susie gently held Ty's tongue down with a thin wooden stick. She used the torch to see into Ty's sore throat. Now let's listen to that strong heart of yours. Dr Susie pressed the stethoscope against Ty's chest. His heart went boom boom, boom boom, boom boom, boom boom. Then she moved the stethoscope over Ty's lungs to listen to him breathing. His lungs went <sighs> Can you take a big deep breath too? And out When you take a breath in, where can you feel it? In your chest? Or maybe in your puku? You want to feel the air coming all the way down into your puku. Well, let's carry on with the story. 
Dr. Susie put a plaster on Ty's knee. She wrote out a prescription for some medicine and said, Wrap up warm and get plenty of rest and you'll soon feel much better. Then it was time for Dr. Susie to visit the hospital ward. There were lots of patients in Susie's hospital that day. Can you see she's got her first aid kit? Or her doctor's suitcase? Mrs. Ruru had a sore beak. Harriet Hedgehog had a tummy ache. Dolphin had a touch of seasickness. Dr. Susie talked to each of the patients and checked their aches and pains. A new patient arrived. Errol had fallen off his bike. Dr. Susie got busy with the bandages. Look at Errol! <laughs> He has bandages all over him. Look at the cat. Hair underneath the bed. The patients needed to stay in their beds, so Dr. Susie played noughts and crosses with Penne Penguin. She helped Dragon draw a picture of a princess. But she thought that jumping on the bed wasn't such a good idea and gave Kangaroo a book to read instead. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not a good idea at all, is it? When it was lunchtime at the hospital, Dr Susie made sure her patients all ate the right things. Matty Mouse couldn't have anything to eat because he was going to have an operation in the afternoon. Can you see Matty Mouse? <laughs> There's no food on his plate. Poor Matty. But after his operation, he'll be able to eat again. Then it was time for an afternoon nap. All the patients needed lots of rest to help them get better. Dr. Susie gave her patients their medicine then they snuggled down to sleep. Hmm. But one of the beds was empty. Where was Kato Pillar? The tiny caterpillar was always playing hide and seek with Susie. Can you see where Kato Pillar is? <laughs> Hiding here on the tray. Cheeky caterpillar. Dr. Susie helped Kato Pillar back into bed and then hung up her coat. There were no more patients to see and she was feeling a bit tired herself. She gave Ty a big hug. He was already looking much better and soon he would be up and about ready to play again. Mmm, look at that big hug. Susie's dad opened the bedroom door. Have you had a good rest, Susie? he asked. Well, come and put your shoes and jumper on. It's time for your doctor's appointment. And that's the end of the story. Did you see what happened there? What did Susie do while she was resting? She pretended to be a doctor before going to visit the doctor herself. Hey, can you see that cheeky Kato pillar? <laughs> Here he is. What's he got around his puku? A bandage. Errol did a beautiful job of the illustrations and you can find Kato pillar hiding on every page in this book. And in the back of the book, Some ideas for things that you can do. You could make a bed out of a cardboard box. You could trace around your hand or your feet or get somebody to trace around your whole body. You could name the parts of your body. 
just like a doctor needs to be able to do. Did you enjoy that story? Or maybe you could snuggle down properly now. Make yourself nice and comfy and have a good night's rest. Good night, my friend. Sweet dreams. I'll see you soon.